There we go. Now today I'm not doing anything fancy because that is the whole idea to relax. But um, tomorrow I'm doing breakout rooms and polls and all of that with another presentation. And um, I need help. I need someone yeah. in the whole session. I Right. I'm not I'm not moderating that, but I uh, but Randy's asked me to help with that. So I will be there. And um, so I did have a question about how you want to set up the breakout rooms for that session. Are you just are you going to randomly assign people yeah. into that's what you want to do? OK, that's the yeah. easiest. So <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely, because it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought if you were going to have a different room for different topics and you wanted people to pick a topic, that makes it a little well, more that's difficult. But fancy. I, Ellen, I, yeah. I really, my first time doing breakout <laughs> rooms, I think I'll, uh, I'm not going to tax myself, you know. Right. We'll, we'll keep it simple. Okay. So we'll, we, um, I will be there tomorrow. Um, I think Jenny Morrison is, um, or Jenny somebody is uh doing the moderation but uh i'll be there to help with the breakout rooms if you need it thank you okay you could see that if i put that there no you can't okay but then i want to see no i don't have to see myself i'm just getting myself ready with my notes even though it's mindfulness you know it's just uh, <laughs> i gotta get my music ready because we gotta be relaxed I have a playlist. There we go. Oh, and I saw um, in your email yesterday that Randy forwarded to me, there's a link that you want posted in the chat for this session. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I, I had, so. I had, um, I actually put a bunch of stuff as the document that goes with this for people oh, okay. uh, like so that they don't really have to take notes today, okay. you know, so that they could enjoy. And then the, a lot of the stuff that I do today, I already wrote out and sent. The link is okay. uh, is that I'm, I'm, if anybody wants to um, have a, you know, a girl 14 to 18 in a uh, special workshop series, that's the only thing I'm really kind of, I guess, uh, selling uh, with okay. comparative uh, because there seems to be a need. People are really depressed. So um, um, a, a psychologist and I are doing um, a four part series for girls, how to become the person you most wish to be. Yeah, excellent. And okay, so what, <laughs> yeah. Once once we get underway, I will post the link to the shared document in the chat so everybody will have that link, even though it's also appears in SCED. But uh, yeah, I really okay, sorry, I'm just okay, there we go. Um I am um, yes, I I thank you for that because people don't there's so much information on online that we don't always um you know uh take the time. Okay. So I'm just getting, I don't like looking down when I present though. Oh, anyway, don't like that. <laughs> you know, it's like a whole thing. I have a whole setup here and I oh, screw up. And then this is me before a mindfulness session. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I'm not stressing. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I look, I like a good presentation. I taught drama. Can you tell, Ellen? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. I didn't want my naked lady. My, see in the back there, the naked woman? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the needlepoint that my grandmother needlepointed way in, back oh. in the day. <laughs> and so now when I'm on calls, I'm like, uh oh, I can't show the naked lady, you know, because they might think, I don't know what. The body's beautiful, but I, it's, it's a little like, I guess, pornographic, but whatever. It's a needle point. Yeah. Well, oh. I always think why, why people don't need to see my messy office. Maybe I should do one of the fake backgrounds. <laughs> you know what? Do you know what someone um, um, I saw has? And it's a great purchase. 
you attach it to the back of your chair. It's a, it's a green screen for the back of your chair. And it just goes around your chair like that. And then it's like seamless. You, you know how the, uh, now with the screens with Zoom, your head moves and then part of you is lost. So that's yeah. just concerning, right? That's upsetting really. So it's just, ugh. so the green screen is very nice. Because you could be in the most gorgeous library. It's like, oh God, Ellen's doing well for herself. You know, <laughs> she's really, she's really saved up her pennies and, and uh, you know, got this gorgeous house. Right? So funny. Well, it'd be better if I could show the out the window. It's much looks much nicer out there. I know, right? But uh, then then it's bad lighting, so we can't yeah. do it that way. It's tricky. Do you do you teach uh, online right now? Uh, no, um, I actually um, I work with Randy uh, and have for years, uh, and I'm I'm mostly retired. <laughs> And then they pull you back in, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't help yourself. All right, I'm ready. I'm so happy I don't have a presentation. I always have such a slideshow and the whole thing. And I just think we're getting tired of that a bit. You know, yeah. if I could just relate to people and just be with them, I think. Uh, but tomorrow's it has to be a slideshow because it's a whole different, this is my business, imperative education tomorrow. It's for a business that I direct, a nonprofit. And so I need to do a pilot. Uh, and it's on uh, anti-racism and all that. I can't just talk about it. I have to show. Yeah, I, I think uh, that will be very interesting. Yeah, it's it's going to be, I hope, I hope. And uh, timely. You know, it's the best. Mainly talking about how we talk about the hard stuff. You know, that's really right. challenging these days. So uh, people are still arriving. <laughs> people are still arriving. So we'll just give it another minute. OK, great. Hello. Hello. Welcome, everybody. I want you to just uh, please have a pen and paper nearby, believe it or not. Pen and paper. You could even have a marker. You could have crayons. <laughs> And in fact, I think that'd be really great having crayons. Uh, and uh, and and just you could even oh you do you're ready to go Chelsea yeah, oh perfect. perfect love it love it we're ready to go <laughs> and look Chelsea is that your home is that your gorgeous home with those beans. This is it, it looks gorgeous, but this is like my kitchen. That's my partner's desk, um, kitchen, living room. And it's just literally windows on all sides. Um, oh. And and then my uh, that's my son's cabin next door. And then I have one more cabin yeah. on that for my myself and my partner. So it's, it's Isn't nice that beautiful. We're building it ourselves and we're really clumsy. So it's like sometimes wonderful, sometimes like, I want a house. So big yard. Okay. It's worth it though. Look how gorgeous it is. Oh my yeah. God. Love it. Okay. Love it. So I think okay. probably we should get started. And oh, wow, um, we have three my name people. is That's excellent. Yeah. My my name is Ellen Kinsel, and I'm moderating the session that Jody's going to be presenting on mindful moments in the online classroom, which I think probably is going to be a topic that follows really well from the keynote this morning. And uh, so uh, the session is scheduled to end at 1115 and we will try to respect that time. I will post the link to the um, shared document in the chat once we're underway, but you can also access it through SCED. So over to you, Jody. Thank you so much, Ellen, for your support and for the uh, friendly face when I first uh, logged on just now. Um, now, I uh, let's go with me full screen if you can. Um, I don't know. Oh, I guess I have you. I'm going to go uh, gallery. What is my problem? Okay, maybe, oh, view, there we go. You could tell that I really, I get a little nervous even though I'm an experienced teacher. There we go. Okay, or now you just see whatever you wanna see. If you wanna see me, see me. 
right? And if you want me to see you so that we're all together while we do stuff, I would really appreciate that because um, as all of you know, when you're presenting to uh, people who you can't see their face, you don't know if it's landing. You don't know, and you feel so, sometimes I, I cry after, and I know that's really right away vulnerable and that's my way, but it's because I feel so alone, you know, and here you are by yourself, you do this whole thing and then you have no, you have no eyes on you. You have, like, I don't need eyes on me. I need you to see you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for, for joining. Here we go. So I am going to run through so much stuff. Ellen dropped uh, my PDF into the, uh, into the chat, I believe, which has all the stuff that we're going to be doing today, including a workshop for girls I'm putting on with Dr. Abby Herland to help girls through this tough time. It's a four uh, part series and um, starting in May. And actually in Vancouver, it would be live. We're trying to make it actually live and do it in a park. So I don't know if we can do that, but we know we we know the kids are struggling and we need, uh, we need to be together. So let's be together now. Um, now, you know, I'm gonna be running through all sorts of things with you today and we're gonna do it together. Because when you experience a shift from a very simple practice that maybe takes a minute to two minutes, you hopefully will be able to go, okay, that works. I am going to bring that into my classroom. Now I know how easy it is. Jody showed me how, okay? And I bet so many of you are already doing this stuff. So please, I understand that you're pros and that you're online all the time, you're, you're teaching your kids, but if it's repeated, it's repeated, sorry. Okay, now mindfulness to me means, you know, facing yourself not just breathing or meditating, but also having the courage and the tools to face yourself. It means going deep inside yourself without judgment to witness your thoughts, your feelings, your reactions, your inspirations, your motivations. It's about really, really understanding yourself and at least attempting to mindfully, you know, on a moment to moment basis. So you're living your life rather than always in the next moment, with, which by the way, most of our time res resides, and most of our mind space resides in the next moment, the next moment. Or ruminating about what happened, what happened, right? When are we here? And how do we get here in this particular moment, together even right now. So um, we have to, you know, notice our emotions and thoughts and have the courage to be vulnerable and face ourselves. And it doesn't mean that life becomes work because I always call it work, you know, that this is the work. It means that life becomes meaningful because you're, you're looking at what am I doing right now? Am I here? And if I notice I haven't been here, what can I do for myself, right, to help me be here? Um, you're watching your growth. And you know, I am older. I am 56. And, um, and so a lot of my friends say to me, can you believe how fast time is going? Can you believe how old we are? And I'm like, shut up first. And then secondly, um, you know, yes, I can believe because I am living my life and I am paying attention. When you purposefully slow yourself down every day, which doesn't mean being less productive. It means finding moments that work for you where you could slow down. It might mean getting up from my desk right now, taking a deep breath before I go get another coffee. That is mindfulness. That is slowing down. When we slow down various moments, we uh, slow down time. When we do that, we don't miss things. We feel at the end of the day, I lived today. And we want to help our students understand the importance of recognizing where their headspace is at 
where their body is at, where their breath is at in any given moment. That we don't wait to be mindful, that we could just start right now. So what is mindfulness? According to you know the father of mindfulness, John Kabat-Zinn, it's, and I want you to really think about this, the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. Non-judgmentally. How many of us have mastered that? I'd say probably zero. So there's a rise right now in teen youth anxiety, depression, 30% rise, probably more since the pandemic. Knowing that, I think we need to really, really, this isn't, this mindfulness isn't extra, everybody. It's essential to learning, okay? It means being mindful of this very moment, getting ready to learn. For this session, I'm gonna run through a bunch of exercises and um, we're gonna begin with a daily practice that I always did and you're probably gonna be able to tell but I was a drama teacher. So, um, you know, I did, I did have the time to get to teach the whole student. I did have the time to be mindful with them because it was such a free open uh, curriculum that I would develop but I still think that everybody else can have the time. So one of the first things we did was check-in, but I'm gonna do because, you know, um, we're, we're right now together on Zoom and you teach on live, I wanna do something different and I'm gonna grab a piece of paper for it. Ah! And I want you to, uh, on a piece of paper, I want you to make a face, a quick, quick face of how you feel right now. Check-in is, I'm checking in, I'm gonna check in with you. And I'm going, see, I'm drawing already. I stopped leading and I started doing. Okay, so now I want you to draw how you're feeling right now, okay? And you're going to put it up for the screen, okay? Let me see what you got, all right? And your mood, and you've got to be honest. Oh, look at the flying hair, Kim. Wow, love it. Look at that. She's like running in the breeze or something. Okay, and so what do we do when students <laughs> put up pictures? Oh, beautiful. Look, extra extra uh, points there, Chelsea, for, for the details. Um, beautiful. Okay, she is feeling, I'm okay. I'm good, Deb. I'm, yeah, you're both. Oh, Isha or Isha. It's like, we, we, are, we are not one emotion. So what we're doing here, a quick check-in with your students, make it a daily practice to check in how are they doing. When you notice that kids daily have a straight line instead of a, a smile, have a, a sad face, have an angry face, start to take note. Start to take note of the students and go, and just, just have on your calendar, you know, Fred, unhappy, for, you know, and then mark them watch them, track them. I feel so afraid for these kids when nobody's watching them and, and checking in on their moods daily. Another thing you could do, a very simple one if you don't have the time to draw is, and we'll all do this right now, please um, put up your finger for one, I'm not doing well at all. Two, I'm not doing well, but I'm okay. Three, I'm okay, not, not terribly enthusiastic. Four, I'm pretty good actually. Five, I am excellent. So I want you to put up your hand for how you feel right now and, you, and honesty is key. There's no reason to lie. This isn't a test. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, great. I put five because I really do feel five today because I love presenting and uh, it makes me happy. So there you go. And also I got very good news about a very big job I got starting September and it's very exciting where I get to lead a whole school and all the stuff I've created and I could cry thinking about it. I'm so excited. So um, I'm in a very good headspace right now. So we're, we're tracking the students and then we're, we're consulting with the, uh, with the uh, 
your uh, your you know your team to uh, to to let people know, hey, keep an eye on, have a chat with, have a one on one with a student. We don't want them falling through the cracks. Now, I think that it's very important sometimes you could start your class. I'm going to run through so many things. I feel like I'm like on a TV show or something. Okay, I'm going to uh, sometimes to start a class to get kids going, to get yourself going, particularly when it's rainy and you're and you're tired, is you play. Hold on, where's my list? I just had it ready to go, but of course, of course. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You play. Where was I just now? You can see I'm so experienced with my um, with my playlists. Your library, mindfulness. There we go. Okay. Sometimes you could play the happy song, and sometimes you could get kids. You go. It's your day to play the song that gets us into our session today. Music is a great way to lift one's spirits. It's truly true. I'm giving you all the tips, all the tricks to raise our our spirits. When we could raise our spirits, we could land in the moment. When we do that, we're together, we're ready to learn. We're, we're, we're getting rid of what happened before this moment so we could be ready to receive this moment with each other. So. Okay, here we go. Y'all know what we're gonna do right now. And you know how happy this is gonna make you. So we start the class. And everybody, don't be afraid to move. Just move a little. Move a little with me. Come on. It won't hurt. Trust me. Come on. You're going to hear it. Who doesn't like this song? I think there's something wrong with you if you don't like it. So you can even have a dance break with students getting them to get up. Seriously, I was moving yesterday with my friend and I realized he got me out of my funk. Let's do right now if you feel a little different okay just notice you came into this session you came in with whatever your world is like right now did that change something for you right and it did and it's so very simple so my main purpose today is to give you little ways to to foster mindfulness music gets us right into the moment gets us right into a mood when students share their favorite song, then they all get to know each other. It's a way to connect. It's so easy. Start a class with that. Start a class with each student. A student gets to start a class with a joke. You know, anything that's going to bring everybody together because it is tough times and it's always going to be tough times, I hate to say, because life can be tough, but we, we could shift it. And we, when we shift it, we're increasing the capacity for learning and, and memory retention. Now we're going to do something relaxing and we're going to do a neck stretch the kids have been sitting right now i'm playing relaxing i'm already i'm sweating and the reason is i'm going to be honest i'm having a hot flash okay here we go it's horrible okay so <laughs> i played this and now we're gonna i'd like everyone to do this with me i'm gonna move back a bit okay so we're going to roll our shoulders you to start to breathe. We're, gonna, we're going to stretch our neck out, turn your head, close your eyes or open them whatever you like, breathe. other side. We're going to inhale and then we're going to just let go. We're really going to try to just, we're going to try to just focus on the music.
and drop into our body. Now we're going to take our right or whichever hand you want to mirror and we're just going to push it out like that with our hand straight. Okay, one arm straight. Feel that from being on your computer, right? When your arm is straight and your hand is straight. Woo. So we breathe and we notice our body, we feel our body, right? That hurts. I see Chelsea grimacing. And now let's just, just shake this out a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go the other arm. Slowly, no rush. And we're breathing deeply while we do this. So you see my hand is straight up. And shaking again. Okay. Let's roll our shoulders a little bit more. Let's, let's uh, draw a circle with your nose. And let the circle get bigger and bigger. Slowly, slowly. The other direction. One last roll. I want you to lift your, take your hands like this, lift them over your head. Go as high as you can, look up at your hands, inhale. And when you're letting go, when you're letting go, I want you to let go of your habitual worries, just for this moment. I want you to give yourself permission to be a-okay right now. In this moment, if you really think about it, everything is perfect. In this moment, we are here together and you're okay. And let's give thanks that we're okay right now. Okay, so those moments of awareness that actually everything is okay and that it's only when I ruminate incessantly about what's not okay that I feel not okay. Now I'm not saying don't feel your feelings because they're real and they, they require you to feel them and process them to move through them but that if you allow yourself to take breaks from your incessant rumination and those negative thoughts but then you find that actually you could have breaks for a minute you could be okay and that maybe when those thoughts come back to you you'll go i don't really have to think about you right now and that's one of my biggest areas of interest so you thought oh mindfulness jody mindful moments what are you doing mindful means making put being mindful of everything it doesn't mean just relaxing. It means being mindful of the way you're living your life and thinking and breathing and moving, right? So moving on to breath work, we're going to do just a belly breath, okay? We're going to, I'm gonna move back. Let me, okay. We're going to uh, just put our hands on our stomach and the reason why we do this and with little kids, if any of you have little kids or you're teaching little kids, they could lie on the ground and they could put their favorite stuffed animal on their stomach. And then they watch the stuffed animal move. It's a great way to get them practicing breathing and it's a very good nighttime practice before sleep. So breath work. It's not woo woo like my description said, it's a fact that when you breathe deeply throughout your day, you are, um, you know, releasing those feel good chemicals. You are relaxing so much in your body. 
when we do that, we are ready to learn and retain information. So it's so easy and the cost is zero dollars. Put your hands on your stomach, okay? Don't judge your stomach right now. Don't put your hand on your stomach and say, if only it was smaller, I would love you more. Forget it. That's just, this is not the time, okay? So let's look down at our hands and get students to do this with you before your class. Do it for one minute, right? So we're going to inhale and exhale. And when we inhale, we're really going to try to make our hands move. Because you're going to notice that sometimes when you start breathing, you're really shallow breathing. Let's deepen that breath for a minute now. A nice and big breath. I like to do a, a, a prior, like a certain breath that we do in yoga where you imagine that your breath is like an ocean and that when you're exhaling, that you're opening the back of your throat and you're making a sound even with your mouth closed. But first we could try it open. So we inhale and we exhale. And it's, imagine it, a wave coming up out of your neck, out of your throat, okay? So inhale. <sighs> Try it. And then close your mouth. Wonderful. Now we're going to do something called, I'm gonna run you through a bunch of stuff. I wish that I had more time. Usually I have an hour and a half. So I have 20 minutes left, great. We're gonna do, and this is another breathing practice, four by four breathing box breathing. It's great for visual. You could even, you know, have kids draw it. You know, you draw it as they're doing it. So we're going to do it together. We inhale, one, two, three, Four, we hold, two, three, four, we exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, we inhale, two, three, four, we hold, two, three, four, we exhale, two, three, four, we hold, two, three, four, and inhale, two, three, four, we hold, two, three, four, we exhale, two, three, four, we hold, two, three, four, and everybody just breathe normally. Notice if there's any shift in you. Just notice if you feel any little bit of difference. The mindfulness is to be mindful of our lives. When you breathe, like this on purpose without judgment, do you feel more connected to yourself? Do you feel more relaxed? And if so, it's a great practice. Now I'm going to, um, I have facts and stuff to share with you, like the fact that uh, the cingulate region generates the experience of suffering forcing us to pay attention, the cingulate re region in our brain. And it's part of the limbic lobe. It's an integral part of the limbic system involved with emotion formation, processing, learning, and memory. The prefrontal regions assess whether there's a threat in your life, right? And sometimes when students are, or when we're away from our devices, unfortunately right now, they're getting a signal of fight or flight affecting this region, singulate region, their limbic system. 
they're not breathing. They're, 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 a, they are uh, a little addicted to their devices as we all are. And so when they're away from it or they hear a ping, they get that instant kind of like fight or flight response. This is happening more and more, which is a cause for the rise of anxiety. Teaching kids about their brains is something I always really, really advocate for. And I go, oh, well, you can't do that right now because your brain's at this level of its development. Oh, you want your brain to develop well because your brain dictates your life. It narrates your story. So because it's so important for your well-being, that is if you feel like you want to be happy in life. Do you want to be happy? And I'll tell you right now, 100% of my studies show when I'm out there in the world, I'll ask every single group who here wants to be happy, they do. I say, well, here's the way. And I do believe it's the way. And so it's understanding that your brain health is essential to your emotional health, to your body health, to your behavioral health, to your relationship health. And that certain practices like, believe it or not, deep breathing, help our brain breathe. In addition, or our brain, our brain breathe, that sounds good, our brain process and develop well. In addition, sleep. They think, I'm not so tired. What's the big deal? Like me when I was young. But you see, when we were young, we didn't have devices because that's how old I am. So we weren't up in our rooms with, uh, you know, up all night, uh, addicted, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Losing sleep equals um, sacrificing your brain development. This is kind of stuff that I would be incorporating into uh, my lessons if I were teaching, uh, particularly uh, teenagers, about what's going on in their brain at this point where they're pruning what they don't need and they're uh, in, enforcing and, and, and building what they do need if they are spending you know a large percentage of their time playing video games that's what's being really uh developed in their brain if they're uh ruminating and upset and doom scrolling and into negativity which is very addictive as you'll learn if you come to my session tomorrow it's totally different on on hate and diversity, you know, and inclusion and all of that, but talking about our propensity for, uh, for being negative. Uh, when they learn about that, uh, then maybe they can start to make some shifts in their life. And one of the things I ask kids is, how much sleep did you get? And I talk about it at the top of the class along with check-in. And then when they tell me, I go, oh, your brain. And I just show care for them. I go, please, I'm begging you, please please give your brain a break. Let it, let it do what it needs to do so that you can have a great life. That's what I want for you. And as much as it sounds like we're telling them what to do, when you, when you, when you, when you tell it, when you communicate this with love and care, it, it reaches them. And that even when you feel you're not reaching them, you know, keep going, right? Those who are parents know, keep going. Just keep, keep it up, keep it. Because the ones who you think aren't hearing you are. The only thing is they might hear it five years later. And that's what I found. And I'm sure you've had this experience where you think someone's not listening. Your whole class, you're like this kid. I had one kid, his hair was in, across his face like this, sitting like this. Every class, five years later, maybe 10 years later, he sends me a Facebook message. You know, you really helped me, really helped shape my thinking. And I was like... He was listening. So trust me when I say, keep enforcing these, these um, positive, uh, you know, developmental um, tools and, and uh, tips for brain health, body health, breathing health, all of it, spiritual health, because they're listening. They just don't want you to know it because it's not cool. So, um, the, uh, yes, the deep breathing stimulates the limbic system, which informs our fight or flight that actually we're not in danger. So before reacting, if we could teach people to take one or three very deep breaths, and that could be an exercise you do if you're teaching writing, 
here's what I want you to do. I want you to notice your relationships. I want to notice your communication. I teach about communication. I'm a communications coach, but anyway. And so I would say, uh, you know, get them to do a project where they have to breathe three times before reacting because we can't control others. And we can't always control what pops into our head. We can't at all, actually. We can't control what we say. And we can control what we do. So how do we do that? We become mindful. How do we do that? We breathe more and we take a step back. We take a, sometimes we have to take a physical step back. And go, wait a second, don't yell at your mother right now. And the three deep breaths get them out of this kind of uh, reactivity mode and give them more a sense of control. Talk about agency and accountability. Talk about empowering them on, in their life. So very simple, but if they don't learn it, how are they gonna know it? Now, uh, what time am I? Oh my God, this is so stressful. Okay, <laughs> so funny, right? <laughs> okay, um, the alternate nostril breathing. Raise your hand if you've ever done that, alternate nostril breathing. Nobody, okay. So because you're teaching and they're at home, it's perfect. In school, I couldn't do it. I did a, pro I did a workshop in school, couldn't, couldn't do it because of the mess. Okay, so um, they're not allowed to touch their face. I was like, oh, change plan. So here's what you do. This is actually a very powerful breathing practice. And it's wonderful, particularly before a hard lesson where they have to take a lot of notes and learn a lot. So you're putting your hands like, a, you know, like, oh, hang 10. See how old I am that I'm using the old hang 10 from Hawaii or something. Okay. And you're going to, you sit relaxed, you roll your shoulders back, you get yourself ready to breathe. We're going to do this for like one minute, but I want you to notice what this does to you. Okay. So you block your, so everybody hands up, you block your right nostril, you inhale with your left. Lock your left, exhale right. Inhale right. Lock right, exhale left. Inhale left. Lock left, exhale right. Inhale right. Lock right, exhale left. Inhale left. We're going to stop there, but I bet, and I'm sorry if you're writing anything in the chat, I can't even see it and I'm not doing it right now. And, I'm, and I wish I could, but I'm not because let's just be together. Um, that alternate nostril breathing, I bet you feel something different now. And now we're going to, everybody, I want you to just stand up behind your desk. And we're just gonna do a quick movement, okay? And this, once again, everything is fast, fast, fast with the students. We're going to do a roll down and a roll up. Amazing for spine health. Did you know that kids right now are developing hunchbacks from being on their devices? So we want to do what we can for them. So we inhale, we're gonna go head down. And we're gonna roll down, holding our stomachs in, bend your knees a little, let yourself hang. Inhale, start to roll up, keep the knees bent. Start to tuck in your butt and stack your vertebrae. vertebrae. Head is the last thing to come up. We roll our shoulders, we do it again, we inhale. We roll down. We roll up. All right, because of the lack of time here, we're gonna stop right there. Once again, everybody, I want you to notice how you're starting to feel, how you're starting to feel in this session. And I have seven minutes to go. So, um, and yes, feel free, Chelsea, to stay standing. 
In fact, you could encourage your students to stand during a session and to position their computers so that it's it, so that they could stand. And then you could do different movements with them, right? Like a very fast movement is you just do a, here I'll show you. You just do a uh, arms, you go like this. It's amazing for the back health to do this swinging of the arms, okay? It's, it's so, and yeah, let your arms, uh, who is that? I see Rosemary. Uh, yeah, let your arm just flap on your body, flap, 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 flap. It's amazing how that makes you feel, okay? And uh, studies were done uh, with people, kids who took tests. And kids who took, their te took tests with their shoulders hunched over performed, or, or, I, okay, performed, uh, I was going to say less good. Like, what, I'm an English teacher. What is my story here? Okay. People who took the test with the back straight performed better than those who uh, rounded their shoulders. Spine health impacts our actual success and our ability to deliver uh, what we've learned, access our memories. So this stuff is not, it's based in facts. They did the studies. It works. Now, um, meditation, a quick, quick meditation you can do, and I'm going to guide you. So you start a class, have, um, I didn't mention this about mindfulness, but I want you to think about what you're doing here is, it's like you're putting your brain through a car wash. I don't know why I see it that way, but I do. And I want you to just imagine that when we give our students the chance to breathe and to take a break before thinking again, uh, we are uh, giving them a chance to, like I said, perform better and learn and retain. The way, a real easy way of thinking about mindfulness is counterintuitive intuitive because it's more like bodiness. It's I want you to imagine that you're dropping from the thoughts and thinking brain to your physical senses and to the body. And that's why so much of what I've done already was the body, notice that. And I have done this and it's so weird, like with a scientist, uh, a friend of mine is a scientist in COVID uh, research and he's always in his brain, it does not stop naturally. So I did a session with him and I said, okay, we're dropping out of the brain. We're coming to the body. We're dropping out of the brain. By the end of it, he was like, oh, I never do that. And he's been so stressed. So just imagine whenever you think of mindfulness, don't think that you need all the words or the terminology or anything fancy. It's, we're going to move from our brain to our body, everybody. So sometimes mindfulness just starts with listening. And like the song I played or everybody ready for class, let's take our mindful break. And notice how just hearing that makes you feel. Isn't it weird that something so simple can be so relaxing? And to guide a meditation is to, you could do a body scan meditation where you have kids sit with their feet on the floor, not crossed, have them put their hands in their lap. I like putting my hands in this position with my thumbs touching and my hand one on top of the other. I roll the shoulders back. I tell them to just focus on their feet, breathe into their feet, close their eyes. Move into your legs. Breathing in, noticing how your mind keeps trying to jump into thought. That's okay. When it does, tell it, not right now, I'm meditating. Focus back on your body, imagining the breath moving into your body parts, into your stomach, into your shoulders, into your face, 
Relax your tongue in your mouth. Relax the space between your eyebrows. Relax your jaw. Listen for the sounds in your environment. And give yourself permission to fully let go right now. And we'll come out of it. And remember, I do that meditation. Usually it's 20 minutes long. And you can take the time when kids are really particularly stressed after a test, before a test. And I'll end it like this. And I want you to listen to this. Close your eyes and only open your eyes when you don't hear any sound at all. And again, I ask you teachers and you leaders, how is this making you feel, right? And we roll our shoulders again and we start to open up and we get expansiveness. And one other thing is our body informs our mind. So we, this is something I have students who, like I work with people on confidence. You stand up and you get them doing the victory pose. And the victory pose is universal. And it's our body's way of telling us we won. We're on the race. And if you do this with your students and you count it for a minute and they're going to notice they feel better, happier, more enthusiastic and more confident. So these are all tried and true, I swear. And it's, it's true. The other thing that you could do is a mantra medita meditation and teach them to come up with a special word for themselves that they don't have to tell anyone. And that when they're feeling overwhelmed, that they could sit and just repeat that word to themselves, um, you know, mine might be loved. And that reminds me that I'm loved. And we can go that deep with our students and that vulnerable and tell them that we are works in progress. And that what I'm teaching you, I'm practicing. And that when you were their age, you felt this way and that you'd love to help them not feel that way. And if you could, you would remove all the ability, all of the pain from their lives and that you would just infuse them with self-confidence and uh, the, the joy you feel when you see their faces. And that when we could start to do that for ourselves first, first you, and then your students, that it emboldens them and helps them feel courageous enough to be mindful about their lives and to face their feelings and their lives and their troubles uh, with more confidence and with the knowledge that this too shall pass. Everything will, you know, the good and the bad. So there's, uh, there's all of that. And guess what, everyone? I only got through uh, half of what I was supposed to get through, but um, I also, in the, um, in the PDF, you will see um, what, I, what I'm offering, you know, what, I, what I, my notes for you. I am so available. If you want, if you email me and say, you know, what would you advise for this? I will email you back because I'm here by myself and I love people and I love teaching. And if I could help you in any way, in any way, feel empowered and happier and calmer, then I will. That's my, that's my goal. That's my life's work. Okay. So, um, I wish you health, everybody. I wish you safety. And I wish you self-compassion, self-care. Fill your own cup before you fill the cups of your students. That is essential. And bring in the light to your life because there's enough, more than enough for everyone. Okay? Thank you very much. Now, if anyone wants to, and I see there's stuff in the chat, which I totally missed because I didn't want to. 
Um, I hope that's okay. And if anyone wants to say anything right now, um, and I thank you for the thank yous. And thank I thank you for being here. Jody. It's thank been you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Made I hope it helps. Feel better. <laughs> oh, great. Thank well, you. your space is gorgeous. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Jody, for a, a great session. My back feels better already. Oh, <laughs> and, Alan, uh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> Amazing. And, and thanks to BCEDL and all the sponsors for putting on the symposium. And don't forget to continue to contribute to the shared document as uh, you experience what Jody's taught us today. Uh, you know, and share what how you're feeling. I appreciate that. And thank you, Ellen, for your support and for being here TechWise for me. I, uh, I <laughs> love that. So, uh, okay. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, too. <laughs> yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Okay. Thanks again, everybody. Okay. Bye bye. I'm just reading the, uh, I'm just reading, I want to read what's in the chat now. Go to get my glasses. And I'm having another hot yeah. flash. Okay. <laughs> I need to go to another session. So, and when I end the meeting, I think I know, it might I know, it. I know, I know. Hi, Gina. Oh, yeah, but I just want to look. Thank you. Okay, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, good. Okay, I saw everything. Great. Thank great you. Great session. Thank I think you. people appreciated it. Oh, 